with all due respect, and I love John. That wasn't Francis Ngannou. I love St. Pierre. I think he's great. But he also, you know, th- th- that wasn't the best guy in the world at that time, with all due respect. You know, he, he picked the right opponent. I'm, I'm coming in. I'm literally getting the number one uh, the number one ranked guy in the world, which is it happens to be Al Jermaine. And I love that challenge. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Josh Showtime. This is Showtime's Fight Form, where we talk all things fights. Thank you guys for watching. As always, man, make sure you hit that like, subscribe button. And this is a stat card that we're about to talk about today, which is UFC 288, headlined by Henry Cejuda and Aljamain Sterling. I mean, this card is about to be crazy. Like, there's so many good fights that I'm not even gonna bring up, like, or I'm gonna break down, but I'm really interested in. Uh, Marina Rodriguez is fighting, super hype about that. Drew Dover is fighting. I mean, he's always in a good fight. Uh, I mean, it, it's a pretty stacked card. Like, I'm super hyped about it. So, I believe my record right now is 9-5-1. I'm, I'm pretty good. And I've already told y'all before, I'm doing a tally for every pay-per-view event. Uh, it, this might have to be another episode where I talk about this, but, man, this year so far, man, we're almost halfway through the year. This year has been pretty underwhelming. Um, not as far as pay-per-view. I think pay-per-view has been pretty solid. But as far as these fight night cards, they've just been terrible. Night. I'm sorry, let me not say terrible. They just have been below average. They haven't been like a good year. Like honestly, ever since COVID, COVID, we were getting some really stacked up cards. Fight night, I mean, Apex and also UFC cards. Now it's so watered down. Like you have the main event and then the co-mains and stuff like that. It's just, eh, I mean, I guess, who cares? Um, I, I don't know, is it because of the heightened um, competition between, between uh, I told you, I'm, I actually am gonna post this. So, okay. Um, like I said before, I'm going to um, post the, what is that? Well, I'm, I'm gonna post. Oh, by the way, if y'all wanna see that, that was my wife that was playing with the camera. She's in a little hissy fit. You know how kids are. <laughs> but um, like I said, I believe that the, uh, I, I think that the competition between PFL and what is it, 1FC and then also Bellator, I think that them taking a lot of good fighters is kind of like, you know, kind of thinning out the UFC a little bit. It's not really, it's not really a bad thing if you're a big MMA fan, but if you're just strictly a UFC guy, I'm pretty sure it's been a terrible year for you so far. But let's get right back into the card. That's what really matters. Um, so at the end of the day, we're going to talk about the first fight. The first fight is Con Gar- um, Gracie, who hasn't fought, I swear, like three years. I swear he only had like one fight in the UFC and I haven't seen him in, a, in forever. Um, but he's fighting Charles Johnson and that's gonna be a very interesting fight. I normally don't like to go with the guy who hasn't fought in years. It's kind of not my thing, um, but it is what it is. <laughs> uh, you know, he is, he's a fan favorite. A lot of people love him. He is a Gracie at the end of the day. He's a very exciting fighter who's a pretty good at standing up, but he's a Gracie, so we already know what he's like best known for and what's his real thing to do. Um, Charles Johnson's a good fighter everywhere, but he's been more active. So realistically, I'm, I'm going to go with Charles Jordan in this fight. I think that he's going to be, he's the most more active fighter. I think that there's going to be a cardio issue when it comes to Kron because he hasn't fought in who knows how long. Um, with that, it comes a lot of, you know, anxiety, a lot of, you know, conditioning issues. There's like a lot of things that you have to go through when you obviously have to Shorten. I mean, not shorten, but when you haven't fought in a long time. So I'm going to go Charles via um, unanimous decision. Or it honestly could be a TKO just because, once again, I think he might possibly gas out the third round and you can just get that finish. So we can book that for my third one. Now, the second fight, I'm trying to go on the order of the actual fight card. So the second fight is going to be uh, Mossar versus Diego Lopez. Now, Mossar is undefeated. I think 16 and 0. Uh, he's pretty well rounded. He has knockout finishes. He has submission uh, finishes, but he has more decisions than anything. Um, typical Russian guy, you know, it's a good wrestler, but at the end of the day, you know, he's pretty solid everywhere as well. Uh, Diego Lopez, I don't know that much about him. I haven't seen him fight personally. Um, I think this is a main, I think they put him in the main car for a reason. This is to blow him up at 
um, was it middle, no, I'm sorry, middle featherweight, but to have another contender, that is a stacked weight class and they do need more contenders. So that is probably a, a setup fight, tune up fight, a fight to get him out and known more. So I'm gonna say that that's gonna be a unanimous decision as well for uh, Mavzar. And we're gonna continuously see him stack up in competition as he go. Um, the next fight, the fight that I'm looking forward to the most, and that is Jessica Andras versus Jan. And this fight is going to be fun, okay? Now, we, they're both on pretty decent win streak. Well, no, actually, I'm sorry, Jessica Andras just lost. But she has a win streak at 115. This fight is at 115. And I've said this before, if you're not the champion, I'm not picking you against um, Jessica Andras. I'm just not. It's, it, that's just kind of how my rule of thumb goes. I think Jan is a very talented fighter. I think she's really good at fighting. Uh, but she does have weaknesses in her grappling. I do think she has the advantage in the striking because she's so quick, she's so technical. Um, and I, I will say that if this fight stays standing, Jan can and possibly will win a decision just from evading the tornado strikes of a Jessica Andrade. But I do think Jessica Andrade will take this fight to the ground more often and it's gonna get ugly. And I think that she's gonna beat her up in the first round. And then her strikes are gonna get a lot slower. When I say her, I mean Jan, it's gonna get a lot slower in the second and third. And Jessica Andrade will get more comfortable in the second and third in the stand-up department and land a lot of tough blows. So I'm gonna say, once again, unanimous decision, um, Jessica Andrade. I do think this is gonna be a close fight uh, or a tough fight for both. And it depends on how this plays out. If Jessica Andrade can't get the takedowns or she can't close the distance, she will get pieced up for three rounds. I will, I will, I'm willing to bank on that. Um, now let's go to the co-main. Co-main last minute fight, a fight that we're all so looking forward to. And that is Bilal Muhammad and uh, Gilbert Burns. Now, uh, Bilal has been on a win streak, a crazy win streak. Uh, at 170, and he's shut a lot of doubters up, including me. And I gotta, I gotta be honest about that. Gilbert Burns, we already know his top three blows away. There's not too many better than him, period. He has like the, the biggest flaw is possibly his chip, but great striking, phenomenal jujitsu, and she, he has good wrestling. Uh, Bilal Muhammad, he's a guy that I like to say is pretty solid everywhere. I don't think he's great anywhere outside of toughness and cardio, but as far as technical ability, as far as stand up footwork, grappling. I don't think he's elite or great any of those places, but he can exploit, exploit anybody's holes. And that's why I think that this is a terrible fight. Uh, I think that Gilbert is just better everywhere, honestly. I think he's a better wrestler. I think he's a better striker. I think he's a better, uh, uh, did I say grappler? Uh, he's better, definitely a better grappler. Um, so, I mean, it's 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 gonna be a tough fight for Blau. And I know I've, I've hated on him before or said he's, you know, gonna lose before, but this one I'm stamping, he's he's gonna lose this fight. This snap, this district is gonna go. Um, I think that this will actually be a TKO stoppage by Gilbert Burns. I think he's gonna clip him, uh, hurt him, and it's gonna be all she wrote. And he should be fighting for the title shot next, not Colby. The winner of this fight should be fighting Leon Edwards next. Colby Covington deserves nada, nothing. I don't know why we're rapping about this. This is stupid. Like, I, I don't know how he's rewarded. Pay-per-view numbers don't even back up that he's a big attraction. Makes zero sense. It is what it is. Um, now let's talk about the main event, the fight that we're all there for, and that is Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo. A fight that honestly is so interesting in so many different aspects. These guys are both wrestlers, great wrestlers. We already know Henry Cejudo is the better wrestler on paper, but man, like Aljamain's grappling is just so top notch. It's like, ah, can he get a takedown? And can he possibly threaten to submit him? I don't know. Stand up? It's still interesting. Henry hasn't fought in years. His last fight was what, Cruz? I was like, what? That was pandemic time. And then you got to factor in the fact that he was fat, man. He just now getting back in shape. Now he got ring rust. I mean, he is a good striker. I don't want to say he's like elite, but he's definitely a good striker. He's locked in. His mental, I think the biggest thing about Henry Seward outside of all his talents is his mental fortitude. How smart and honestly, how mentally tough he is. No matter how hard the fight is, no matter how tough the fight is, no matter how bad and danger he is, he's honestly still a, he's still a threat. Um, you know, and you can't really shut that man down mentally. He, he really believes he can beat Volk. That's how mentally insane he is. So, um, you know, you gotta give it up to him when it comes to that. I, I, it's a hard fight to really judge, man, because if we, if let's say, if Henry Husuda was actually active, I would go Henry Cejudo easily. I would say Henry Cejudo can stuff the takedowns, and honestly, he's the I think he's the quicker, and I think he's the more powerful striker, and he honestly can get Aljamain out the way. Uh, but 
he hasn't been fighting in years, man. I can't, I can't just say Henry Cejudo will win. Um, Aljamain is just such a dog now, and he's just getting so mentally tough. I mean, not mentally tough, he's just getting so much better every single time I see him. Um, so realistically, like, I can see either winning, and I'm like being honest, but I'm gonna go the champ. It's gonna be and still. Um, Henry is getting older. You can't keep coming in and out, man. Um, you're going in, you're in one of the, the toughest divisions in the uh, UFC, actually in all of MMA. This is just a tough fight for you to just jump in and say, I can do this. And if he does this, he gets all the credit in the world because he's being in his prime, Aljamain Sterling. And we gotta like move him up in the all-time rankings, man. This this is, this would be top-notch impressive. But I'm going to go um, Aljamain Sterling. I'm going to actually say he's gonna finish him via rear naked choke in the fourth round. That is my picks. I would love to hear what you guys think, man. As always, man, follow me on social media at Papa Showtime, Josh Showtime, whichever one you find me at. And as always, man, make sure y'all be blessed, man.